So you're traveling along in solo queue, hoping to land a couple of nice, motivated teammates willing to do what it takes to win. You accept your match as it pops up, only to see everybody's best friend, Jai Pete, on your team. How can this possibly be? Obviously, Playoff Beard is looking down on you from the lair, purposely matching with you with trolls and saw mains like Jai Pete. I have bad luck, you cry. The system is obviously flawed, you scream as you write an angry Reddit post, tagging, tagging Surprise Birthday and Zekent, demanding that they fix the damn game. But let me stop you right there. Vainglory has more than 5 million players right now and is still growing. At any given time, due to completely random circumstances in their own personal lives, or just their own unique human attitudes, a single player may choose to troll or throw a match. Depending on your tier, you could be queuing at the same time as over 1,000 or even more like 10,000 people depending on your tier that have the exact same visual rating as yourself. By virtue of random chance, the players in the queue at that same time as you may be predisposed to throwing matches due to the factors mentioned before. The matchmaking system itself cannot see who does or does not have a poor attitude towards the game or other players, because the matchmaker is not constantly scanning the brain of each player like something out of 1984 or Psychopaths. I'm actually going to use a term from Psychopaths going forward in this video. If you don't know, it's a really good science fiction anime depicting a dystopia where each citizen is closely monitored by a ruling computer system and is given a number called the crime coefficient. Based on constant brain scans, it goes up or down. If it goes over 100, you are sent to forced therapy. If it goes over 200, you are executed on the spot. It's easy to believe that you can assign a fictional crime coefficient to each player in Vainglory by using criteria such as, how easy is it to piss this guy off? How much farm can I steal before he starts diving turrets? Can I play my off meta main here without him flying off the handle? A player with a 200 plus crime coefficient, remember, this is fictional, is likely to throw the game simply because the first rotation went awry. You've all played with this guy, I know, because I have too. To believe that the matchmaker is out to get you, or that you have bad solo queue luck, is just the gambler's fallacy. Runs of good or bad luck do not exist in the matchmaker, because each pull of the queue is statistically independent from any other. You can see this, or you can see this, you can see in this match that the enemy team does not exactly have a balanced team comp full of players with low crime coefficients. I feel bad for the Lance, because I know the Baron to be a frequent offender, and it's common knowledge that Dry Jai Pete is NA's favorite troll. But the position that the Lance is in happens to every player in the world, at random and different times, and it's impossible to claim that any one player is stuck in these situations more than others, because of the vastness of the player base and matchmaking system. Everybody gets stuck playing with individuals high in crime coefficient. You can mix, you can minimize this risk by partying, but in solo and duo queue, it is unavoidable. But the important thing is to simply accept that it just happens. It is nobody's fault, and there is nothing you can do to change it. Once you let go of your anger and frustration over trolls in your games, and just accept it as part of the system, you can truly elevate yourself as a player, in attitude, win rate, and eventually elo as well. If the brain scans I mentioned earlier are starting to seem like a good idea to divide the good and bad players for queuing, remember that in Psychopaths, unclean citizens based on their number are executed on the spot. Also, it's kind of a huge violation of civil rights, or fundamental human rights, so that's a thing. Knowing this, you can now refute anybody who claims that the matchmaker is out to get them, or the whole system is broken just because they lost a couple of games. The only way that the matchmaker can judge the character of a player is through their karma, which is not always correctly indicative of a player's perceived crime coefficient. Remember again that crime coefficient does not actually exist and is something that I personally use to classify and describe the denizens of tier 10 solo queue. But if it's helpful for you, please feel free to adopt it and maybe just go watch Psychopaths to more fully understand the concept. I don't really watch a lot of anime, but I really recommend this show specifically. It was incredible, but that's not the point. Where in the anime they use exact scanners and computer systems to calculate people's numbers, I infer this on the nature of other players based on names and prior experiences playing with them. It helps me to moderate my own behavior in the game based on how much I can or cannot get away with before these guys will flip the heck out. So overall, stop complaining about the matchmaker, 
Um, just stop. The matchmaker does not know who is and is not a troll. Karma is not a perfect enough indicator for it to know that all the time. It happens to everybody. Not exactly equally, but there are so many players that just because there are so many players, it almost comes out to equal, just because the vastness of a data. If, you, if you've taken statistics, you know that the larger a data set gets, the less likely you, the less likely you are to have huge deviations in it once you like compare it as a whole data set. And that's the point here. There are so many players that just because you got three trolls in a row does not mean that like you are indicative of the whole matchmaking system. If you get three trolls in a row, you could easily go talk to somebody who has gotten like five matches in a row with the enemy team AFK'd, right? It happens to everybody. And remember, you only remember you only actually remember the bad experiences. Numerous times I know that I've played and had um like somebody on the enemy team leave or a match like this, there is no ban from the enemy team and then they first pick Saw and then oh it's Jai Pete, instant win. But you don't remember the good experiences, like me playing Arden in this game. I'll probably forget about this one tomorrow. But what I do remember is the guy on my team that picked Crystal Jungle Baron. And then that is what I would use to go and write an angry Reddit post tagging Zika and Surprise Birthday and r talking on Twitter about how Playoff Beard must be individually targeting me from reaching Vainglorious Gold. So overall, I hope this video could be a voice of reason for people that are continually frustrated with the matchmaker or blame the community for being immature or behaving poorly. There are so many people out there playing Vainglory that you cannot hope to police everybody's behavior unless you want to use me like inhumane methods like 1984 and Psychopaths. In Psychopaths, there's actually, I think, like a reference to people that were malicious in online video games actually were f sent to forced therapy and executed <laughs> because their coefficients were high in real life because that behavior in the video games translated to their real life like numbers going up so unless you want to institute a system like that which I can guarantee you now is not gonna happen we're not going to be able to ever completely fix trolling in online video games um, I've played enough Vainglory that I just accept it for what it is now it's unfortunate um, sometimes you get an unfortunate situation three times in a row. Maybe you even get it four times in a row. But it's also important to know that you don't lose only because of their players. A lot of times you lose because of yourself. Now, obviously, I know I've played games where I've gone like 13 and 1 and then lost because I died once in the last team fight. Um, those games are frustrating, but honestly, they don't happen very often. Losing a game is a combination of everybody's fault, usually. Um, although, if your teammate does AFK at 30 seconds and your team surrenders, yeah, that's not your fault. That's that one guy's fault, and the whole fault rests on him. So, I guess what I wanted to, the point I want to get across in this video is stop complaining about trolls in solo queue. It happens to everybody, and you don't see everybody loudly complaining about it, do you? And that would be because either, well, maybe those people don't feel like talking, but also because we know that it happens to everybody, and it's just it just happens because of the way the system is designed because of the number of people that are playing and it has nothing to do with luck and to say that it has anything to do with luck is the gambler's fallacy there's no such thing as a run in solo queue um, and every single push of the button is independently er, is statistically independent from the others so that's gonna be it for this video you guys I hope you enjoyed it Hope you learned something useful, and if you're into anime, check out Psychopaths. Um, it's really cool. So I'll see you all later.